And my first sparring session there was, you had, on the mat, you had Terry Etim, Paul Kelly, Paul Taylor, Mark Scanlon, Paul Sass, that's five UFC fighters. Mm. <laughs> All in the UFC at the same <laughs> yeah, time. You had probably about 15 on the mat then. And I went down to my first, um, first sparring and I got put on what was called the wall of death. Um, he says, how long have we been trying to get in the UFC now, Mike? I says, since I started, you know, and, and um, he says, have we done it yet? I says, no, he, yes, we have. So, he, he, you know, he, Class. He, he had he had a UFC contract in his hand and he Me and Till trained a lot, a lot together. You know, we, um, you know, we was the only two that was in the UFC at the time and he's, my wrestling helped his, his game because, and his strike helped my game. Obviously he was heavier than me and he, fucking, he was so heavy handed. <laughs> was he, he hit hard, he hit very hard, yeah. Okay. And I just couldn't, I couldn't see. It was like, everything was really blurry um, where, to where I could only see a figure. And um, I remember after the first round, I just stood in the middle of the cage and waited for the cut man to come and take me to the cage because I didn't know where my walk, my corner was. I look at mean? Cyril Gain and look at Tom and um, I think the similar fighters, yeah. but Tom's just a bit faster. Yeah. Did I mean Tom's a bit faster than every week? Mate, I'm so shit at it still. I, I find it fucking. It's that um, I don't know. I always find it with, with the actual oomph to go out, go for, go out. Do you know what I mean? To actual to actually do it and when yeah, to mate. do it. That's what I struggle with the timing of that, it. That is that is a common thing though. Like that's it. It's hard to judge and just build because by the time you built up the confidence to try and shoot a double, yeah, it's like it's gone. Yeah. yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's what so I find. A lot at the of people moment, find that, that find that I've been doing a lot. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's like a challenge in football. If you go in half ass, you come out pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. as well. Well, that's so the that other thing, isn't it? It's, it is going in full blood, isn't it? It's, yeah. Got, yeah, it's, it's commit. fucking committing and going for it rather than uh, 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 should I, uh, yeah. you know what I mean. And it's that that's a fucking that pisses me off. I just I get angry with myself because I'm like just fucking go for it. You're a guy puller though, mate. And you see, so you're alright. Yeah, I am a guy puller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's a bum scooter, mate. I'm not into them what skews. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Happy happy to crack on, mate. Good to go, yeah. Happy days. Mike Grundy, welcome to the Everyday Perspective Podcast. Thanks very much for having me on. You've got a great setup. Thanks, mate. I appreciate you coming on. Um, obviously, I've um, been a little while since anybody's seen you. Um, obviously, we know who you are, but just for those that, that maybe aren't familiar with you know, mixed martial arts and UFC, um, you're a professional mixed martial arts fighter. Yep. Uh, 12 and 4 professional records right, yeah. um, UFC veteran with four fights yep um, and have a background in wrestling and won the I think bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games in 2014 that's right yeah, in Glasgow yeah and are you still working with team Carbon at the moment as wrestling coach yeah I'm still still there every day te teaching and training with the lads at team Carbon you know we've got we've got a good group of lads and got some a lot of talent coming through a lot of young talent coming through and stuff so but yeah we, we, we work on wrestling almost every day really yeah <laughs> <laughs> lucky boys yeah, <laughs> do yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean having that yeah, on your like, doorstep like you said just before there's not much not much wrestling knocking about really in this country but just in, just in Wigan alone near my gym we've got I think we've got four four gyms not near, near my gym have you so back, back in, our, in our end it's quite it's quite popular yeah, That's good, isn't it? yeah. We'll, we'll chat a little bit about I guess where you started with that because as you say it's, it's definitely unfamiliar certainly in a lot of areas of the country. Yeah. And um, before we touch on that, I guess um, it'd be good to just sort of talk through the last sort of 15 months or so. Obviously, the last time we saw you was your last fight in the UFC. Um, sadly, it didn't go your way. No. Um, sort of 15 months on, mate. I know it's been a, a bit of a shit year for you. But are you happy just to, I guess, chat us through what you've been up to in the last sort of year and, and, and roughly what your plans are moving forward from here? Yeah, so last time, obviously, I thought it was in UFC London. You know, um, against Mako and Amir Kani. Didn't go my way. You know, um, that fight, you know, I think nine times out of ten I win that fight. Mm. That is a fight that I, I should be winning um, due to just the, my conditioning against his conditioning fight kind of thing, you know. And my wrestling, I know, is more superior than his wrestling and that was his main game. So, obviously, I got caught in the choke and, you know, it put me to sleep, which is the only way he could have possibly won that night. Um, any other way, it would have gone my way. Uh, I think that, well, I'll talk a little bit about the fight. The fight, I always said that it never really affected me, the fact that obviously it come out about my dad, you know. Um, I spoke about my dad before and in the media, which I didn't mind doing, you know, at the time. Um, but I never, I thought it never ever affected me, you know, going in. I thought my emotions would get the better of me. But looking back and I watched the video back and I thought maybe it did a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of little things, um, you know, before the fight and stuff. Um, 
we kind of got to the venue very for some reason we got to the venue very late i did anyway i was on the last buzz before the main card so i was the last fight before the main card so it was like i got there and the fight before me was going out right. so literally i had to get my hands wrapped i did a quick round of pads and i was back in so i felt it was all so quick it never ever happened before but that fight particularly did i just really i didn't really feel i could fully switch on and when i when i when i heard my music come on and i was going out ready to get to fight I felt like I just had to do something to try and get myself going a little bit. I had a lot going on in my mind, I suppose, with my dad and stuff like that, and he was obviously in the crowd at the time. Um, and I just kind of, I ran in, you know, and I ran in, and that's not me. Usually I'm, like, coming out to Oasis and I'm walking out quite chilled. I'm a very chilled guy before a fight, and um, this time I wasn't. I was quite riled up, you know, and um, that isn't me. So I think, you know, that didn't go that didn't go in my, in my way as well. So, um, but yeah, that fight I lost. Um, and then obviously I'm not in the UFC anymore. Um, I've had, I've been, what I've been concentrating on since I've, since I've had that fight, I've been concentrating a lot on coaching. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've always coached, but um, I've just setting up my online academy and, um, you know, I've done a lot of techniques. I've been building up a, a video database really, and uh, we're going to launch that in the next couple of weeks. So people can subscribe for the month, you know, quite a cheap price to start off with. And we're going to do like strength and conditioning programs that is going to base around grapplers and wrestlers and MMA fighters and stuff, you know. Wrestlers are some of, some of the best athletes in the world, they say. A lot of people say so. <laughs> um, I might as well pass on my knowledge and um, explain what I've done really and to the outside world rather than just, you know, in Wigan and, and yeah. Liverpool kind of thing. So I've been setting all that up and, you know, always looking after the lads who are coach. I've been coaching them daily. And uh, mainly my son, really, he's, he's he's on the on the rise as an amateur MMA fighter, one of the biggest prospects in the country. A lot of people say so. Um, yeah, I was looking at some videos, mate. He looks like a little savage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, not little, but yeah, he looks like a savage, <laughs> mate. He's, um, yeah, he's an animal. He's very good. He's um, he's just he's only eighteen at minute, but he's he's four. Well, he's four and one, but. The one loss was a disqualification. He was um, dominating the fight and he, um, he he needed the lad as he was on his way up. Caught him in his nose and broke his nose, so you can't do an amateur, so he got disqualified. So we're classing him as five and all, really. But. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So, yeah, that's I've, I have been busy since, you know, the, the fight, but not not fighting, obviously. Yeah, and, and what is the plan around fighting at the moment? Are you... Are you sort of contracted with anybody, any other promotions at the moment? Are you looking to get back in? Are you retired? So um, I'm not contracted yet. I'm not going to retire just yet. Mm -hmm. I um, I had a wrestling match against my son not long ago, um, which was just a bit of a, a banter from that from when he turned when he was nine year old. And <laughs> I was I hung my wrestling boots up then, so I always said my last ma wrestling match was always going to be against my son Jack, mm -hmm. due to him giving me a stick when he was nine. When he was nine, I got a bronze at the Commonwealth Games, and he was saying. Um, Oh, it should have been a gold. You're not going to gold, you know. <laughs> no, so, so yeah, he was giving me some stick at Good nine. Lad. He was a wrestler as well. And I said, all right, when you turn 18, me and you will have a wrestling match. Then that wrestling match has just been and gone now. And I hung my wrestling boots up. I was going to hang my gloves up. I had my gloves in my bag on the night because we sold it out. We had like all tables, a sit down dinner and all that type of stuff. We did it to raise money originally for my dad. Um, obviously, but he passed away. So I just give the money to my mum. I was going to hang my gloves up that night. And just my gut instinct just said just not yet you know I'm just not ready yet to, to just hang my gloves up and um, weirdly enough the day after um, Dan Hardy messaged me and he says congratulations on your wrestling career you know if you're still keen on fighting you know we'd like to have you in PFL so um, I've not really mentioned that too much just yet because nothing's come to tuition but that is where I want to be and that's definitely I think now is the second biggest after the UFC is PFL and it's on the rise you know the the tournament bases, I think, would suit me. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be in the tournament. And, you know, let's see what happens with that. That's where I'm at. I'm just in the middle of speaking to them and hopefully getting on either PFL Europe or hopefully the global tournament. Yeah, you don't want to retire with any regrets, do you? you no, know, that's it. Like, you've probably got, what are you, 36? I'm 36 yeah, now, but so you're a long time retired, That's you, so. what I mean, yeah. So it's a few more years and then it's too late, isn't it? So you might as well fucking just go for it, mate. Yeah. yeah. And I've always looked after my body, you know. I've always trained and... I've never like been one of them who goes out every single weekend drinking alcohol and stuff like that. So I've I feel like I'm I feel I'm fine. You know what I mean? I know where I'm at. I'm training. I'm still training well with the lads and you know competing well. So still uh, still firing the old. There's still more fights left. In me <laughs> That's yet. it. Yeah. yeah. Happy days, mate. Awesome. Look forward to it. Um, so obviously we mentioned a second ago about the wrestling, and we were talking a little bit offline as well about that in the UK the wrestling scene sort of historically is is always been quite poor. 
So whenever I hear about anybody sort of with a background in wrestling coming from the UK, I'm always fascinated to hear about where that came from. Yeah. So you're able to take us all the way back to, to when you started wrestling um, and why you started wrestling, where you started wrestling. How'd you get into that? Yeah, I started um, I started wrestling when I was six. It just come about, my friends was on about going to wrestling. They was from the area. I was a little bit out the way uh, from where the wrestling club was originally. And, you know, I just I went home from school and I said to my dad, can I, can I go and try wrestling? And I never even knew that he ever wrestled when he was a kid. He never mentioned it. He only did it for a couple of years. He wrestled when he was a kid. And... Um, then he told me, obviously, he wrestled, and I went down to wrestling, and I went to, um, they call it Snake Pit now, which is Roy Woods, which is a catch gym. So that he's kind of reinventing catch catch wrestling at the minute, but I went to there, and just the first session, I was only a small kid. My dad always called me the run to the family, you know, like, so I was just I was just small, and it's quite nippy, and I got into, I got into that, I got went down there to wrestle, and the, the coach come to me afterwards and just said, you know, you, you, you could be good. He says, you you know, I was really good at getting out of things. People, you know, trying to pin me. They couldn't pin me because I was trying to get out of things. I was small, I was strong and, and I was nippy. So that just built me confidence because I was quite a shy kid anyway. Um, and I wasn't too confident as a kid. So just because that coach come to me, Roy Wood, and he said, you could be good. So that built me confidence straight away just from that little saying, you know. And, and I think that's what sport does and, and, and wrestling and things like that. So... I think that's what it does in this it, it, to, you know, build your confidence. Mm-hmm. Just that coach saying that, let me latch on to the to, to wrestling, you know. So from then I never I never really looked back. I um, all my mates didn't carry on. They all went to rugby because rug- Wigan's a rugby town, you know. A lot of people play rugby, so they all went into that. I I stuck to wrestling then. Yeah, fair play. Um, we call this 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 podcast every day perspective because we want to try and I guess translate some information that we get from our experts and the guests to kind of layman's a little bit. And we've had obviously jujitsu guys on. We talk about jujitsu a little bit. We've had a karate guy on. We've not had a wrestler yet. No. And I think a lot of people will naturally think about wrestling and think, of course, about sort of entertainment wrestling. So WWE. Yeah. WWE yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, you able, are you able to talk us through? And it, you know, it's, it, for our own information as well. Talk us through the different types of wrestling. So I'm, I'm familiar with some of the terms, catch, Greco, freestyle. Yeah. Are you able to just talk us through and the audience through, I guess, the different types of wrestling and the, the differences between them? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, we I have my own gym and a lot of people do come in the gym and think we're doing WWE, you know, <laughs> but then we slowly transla- translate it to, to what freestyle wrestling is and stuff like that. So then they, they get into it then, but it does actually do us, do us favours because a lot of people come into the gym for that reason, but then they say, no, it's not that, and they, they try freestyle. But yeah, so you've got freestyle wrestling, which is uh, you can you can attack the legs, you know, and you can attack the upper body as well. Um, it's a very technical technical sport. You get to the ground, you've got to try and manoeuvre, kind of trying to get them to over to the back. If you tilt them over to the but towards the back, it's like two points. You know, if you um, if you pin them, obviously the match is fully done. Then, yeah, that's freestyle wrestling. Then you've got Greco wrestling, which is only upper body, so you can't touch the legs at all. So they they are they are very strong, you know, because they're always lifting at each other, the suplexing each other, trying to throw each other mainly. So it's, there's no leg attacks at all in the Greco Roman. Um, and then obviously catch wrestling, which is kind of being reinvented, which was where it all originated from, and it originated from Wigan apparently. So really okay, yeah, and. Um, that's you have got locks and cranks and nasty ankle locks and neck cranks and stuff really? like that. Yeah, but you can't you can't go onto your back in it, so you can still get pinned. Mm. So a lot of the a lot of the techniques are from like when they're on that turtle kind of thing on their hands and knees. So you get the cranks and the toe holds and things like that from there. They're quite nasty. Nasty, uh, quite <laughs> nasty, sounds fucking uh, good to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might appeal to you, but yeah, they're quite nasty um, cranks. Yeah, okay. So that's catch. Yeah, and are there any other styles? I think that's it, isn't it? Just the three mainly? Mainly, yeah. I mean, we actually don't do too much um, Greco over here. We're mainly freestyle. Yeah, yeah, okay. And obviously you were in Wigan, so there was a bit of a scene there, but in the rest of the UK, was there much of a scene? Like, did you ever travel around or was there anybody anybody else doing it? The better, I think... uh, I'm not just saying I'm not just saying it because I'm from Wigan, but the be- the better wrestlers are, um, are probably mainly from that end, yeah, um, from Wigan. But we do we as a kid, I travelled all over the country, you know, to um, to compete and wrestle. Yeah. Um, you know, we we travelled to London. We always had always competitions in London, in Scotland, mm-hmm. uh, Birmingham, places like that. So we 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 travelled a lot as kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. And talk us through the competition scene. So I think you competed professionally, if you, if you call it that, from 2007 to 2014, just before you then started fighting in M MMA, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I competed um, internationally. Yeah. From, well, I was my first international tournament and camp was at nine. I yeah, was nine okay. year old. I went to, um, I was fortunate enough to have a coach who was who was from America. He was, I'm not saying the coach is a bit here or bad, but the, my coach, my grassroots come from American coach. He come over to a UK to help build up wrestling in this country, you know, to try and get it in the schools. Yeah. So there was basically, a, cutting a long story short, there's a millionaire who put a lot of money into into British wrestling, mm -hmm. and he um, he got this co coach from America to try and come over and try and get into the schools and make it more appealing and stuff like that because it wasn't popular, obviously. And he also made up his own club in Wigan. So um, I went to that club. That was the club I ended up going to. Um, so I had him for like five years of my main part, of my start of my wrestling career. Oh, so I had, you know, very good grassroots. Yeah, good foundation, good, isn't it? A good foundation, yeah. So um, I was very fortunate to have that. And when I was nine, he took us all to, he took the team that he had, he took us all to America for three, four weeks yeah, to train. So mm. we got, you know, was was in America. And we, we actually still do that to this day as a club. Every two years, we take 10, 15 kids to America mm. just to train because he started that with us. And we knew how valuable the experience was. You know, you don't get that kind of experience over here. So we just need to go and open the kids' eyes and see what it's, you know, what it's about. And this is, these kids are doing it day in, day out in school. So we, we have to go and show them what, what can be done and, and that type of thing, you know, so they can inspire to be like that. Yeah. So we take them kids to America every two years and, you know, they, they, they come out, they come back much better, but they just see how hard people's training out there. Mm. Yeah, it's bonkers, isn't it? Because I think, again, we probably know, but a lot of people might not, but in the States, obviously the sport in school is, is seems to be a lot bigger than it is here. But wrestling yeah. is, is one of the, yeah, one of the main sports yeah, in school, Yeah, in America right? it's big, it's very big. Yeah. Like we we like well, the, we go to camps and we're there and there's you've got like four or five hundred kids on the mat. Is it massive sports are with loads of sports wrestling? It's crazy, isn't it? That's why they have such a good foundation, though, isn't it? Yeah. In America, you know, with the UFC and stuff like that, if, if you're a good wrestler, it gives you such a fucking big advantage with mm. with any sort of grappling mixed martial arts sport. Yeah, it? I agree. That foundation's fucking huge. Yeah, hundred percent. So you start competing when you were nine. Um, was that just in the UK or did you compete when you went to the States or was it like Europeans or world competitions? How does that work? I started competing when I was seven, actually. The, seven, but sorry. I, um, I started going international when I was nine. Um, so I competed domestically yeah. every every other weekend, really. Um, okay, we so compete a lot with wrestling. There's enough of a scene back then even to compete that often. Yeah, probably for us more so the club that I was at because we used to go to... Um, so we had, we had all our domestic competitions, which was probably about... I don't know, 12, 10 to 12 a year uh, competitions. And then you would, we would go every other weekend, we would go to, um, is it called the Air Force Base, Lake and Eve or something? They had, because there was um, American um, military or whatever it was, they, they had kids there that wrestled. So we would go up and just do like a dual meet every other weekend and wrestle them, our club. So we, we was, like I said, we was fortunate enough to do that. Um, yeah, so I competed. And then I started competing internationally when I was nine. Yeah. I probably went to my first biggest European tournament when I was 13. Yeah, okay. Um, where, I, where I medaled then, which was, was quite unheard of, you know, for, for a UK guy to go over to Europe and and uh, and even medal, really. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, got, I went to Latvia and I, there was like, because usually over here you've got like two or three wrestles in your weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then over there you go to the list and you've got like 30 in your weight. Mm. So it's wow. like, wow, what? you think, you I've got to wrestle all 30. Like, you don't know. What you're <laughs> so um, you still only have like, you have, like, I think I had like five or six matches and, and I got I got silver in that tournament. Yeah, well done, the first one, yeah. Yeah, that kicked you on a bit, wasn't it? Definitely. Oh, yeah. So it was, it was, it was a big thing that back then because, like I said, there was not many people going wrestling and getting medals, you know, in, in the country. Yeah, fair play, mate. And competing in, in, in Europe, obviously, you've got, we just mentioned the States and their sort of pedigree for wrestling, obviously, Eastern Europe known for their wrestling as well, especially yeah. Russia. Did you feel, or did you kind of experience much of a difference between those different styles? Or were they much for much? Yeah, there is there is a difference to styles, definitely. You know, um, the Americans do come out very well conditioned um, and they're all a little bit more brute force power and, and um, you know, blast doubles type thing. You know, they, they wrestle different. They're very technical, obviously, but the Russians are just... Um, mainly, I'll talk about the Russians. I've been to Russia like eight, eight times, nine times training and stuff, but... They're they're very technical, but they're um, they're very relaxed. 
you know, the, the way they are, you know, they're, they're comfortable in any position where they're at. You yeah. think, oh, he's going to get scored on here. He's just not, you know what I mean? He's just so so <laughs> comfortable. That he's half on his back and he's still getting out, you know. So the, the different the different breed of wrestlers, the, the Russians. Back when I was probably uh, coming into the seniors, the Russians were dominating. Mm -hmm. But now the Americans seem to be coming back through, you know, they've got your Jordan Burroughs and people like that and Kyle Dake and they're, they're all coming back through and starting to dominate now again. Yeah. But back when I was going into seniors, the Russians were, mm -hmm. were the ones like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. But definitely two different, two different styles. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating one to watch. Obviously, the UFC is, is, is it's got a number of very high sort of, you know, sort of high level wrestlers, obviously. Yeah. Could be Islam. Um, and then uh, is it Bo Nickel I think just coming to the UFC recently from, yeah, from the yeah, States yeah Bo Nickel's obviously very good in America yeah, yeah. yeah so it would be interesting to see how those guys get on and certainly if they ever compete um, so then I think you got the 20 you started competing um, could they continue to compete sort of in wrestling then for seven years or so did you have any amateur fights in MMA? Uh, yeah I did yeah I had six six okay six amateur fights because I think your first pro bout was in 2014 is that right? Yeah, after the Commonwealth Games medal, yeah. Yeah, okay. So were you kind of waiting to, to, to kick on with the professional MMA once you'd achieved a certain standard or certain um, medal in in wrestling? Was it, the, was, it, was it that you were after? No, so what happened was I actually finished finished wrestling in 2010. Okay. Um, I went to the Commonwealth Games in 2010 as well in India. And um, there was a, there was a quite a few politics beforehand with that, with, with me. So basically what happened was I I was on the, the world class team from seventeen years old. Took on as a I, w I was took on and fortunate again, you know, I was I was one of the only athletes to be paid to actual wrestle. You know, no no one gets paid to wrestle in this country, you know. Um so I I got paid to, to train. So I was stuck on the world class programme at seventeen and um was aiming to go to the two thousand obviously to go to the two thousand ten Commonwealth Games and also mainly to go to the Olympics in two thousand twelve. Yeah. So that's why I was took on the programme. But after a year or so being on the world-class programme, there, there was like, um, you know, different nations starting to creep into our country, uh, Ukrainian, Russians, places like that. And we thought there was always training partners for us yeah. to, to obviously help us to, to crack on and, yeah. you know, get get medals at the, the Olympics and get medals at the Commonwealth Games and things like that. And, um, you know, four or five years down the line, they started getting passports and they started wrestling for us. Right. So, you know, there was there was some there was there was better than us, some that we could beat, but they they there was better than us and they wrestled in the nationals and they won, they win, they go. Yeah. And um two thousand ten I I wrestled in the, all the trials for the Commonwealth Games at seventy four kilogram and I won all the trials at my weight. Mm -hmm. So there was like you had to medal at um a tournament in internationally. You had to like win the nationals and win like at one of the qualification tournaments. So I'd done it, I'd done all that. And um, just a few weeks, probably about a couple of months before we were supposed to leave for India, there was a guy who was at the weight above, who was a Russian guy. And um, he decided to come down to my weight. So then, even though I'd already been told I'm going, the, the, the British wrestling said, granted him a wrestle off against me. <laughs> what so, the fuck? My, my parents have booked their, their hotels, the flights and everything to go to India to watch me because I've been told. Yeah. I've had my track shoes sized up and everything, you know, I'm ready to go. But And then, um, yeah, just two months, a couple of months before, you've got to wrestle this guy off, best of three in, in the in the academy where we were trained. Mm. I says, right, I says, so I was obviously gutted, you know what I mean? Because I, I was ready to go. And um, anyway, we did the wrestle off. I did say, I said, listen, if, if, I, if I didn't win this, then I'm, I'm finishing wrestling anyway. And um, we did the best out of the three, and I beat him um, two matches. I beat him the first two matches, so we didn't go to the third for the decider. It was a close match, you know, he was a very good wrestler, but um, yeah, I, I, luckily enough, won the matches. And I went to the Commonwealth Games in India. And then after that, I just kind of fell out with it a little bit just because the way we got treated. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's terrible, isn't it? Six year old, and my dreams was to go to the Commonwealth Games, and it nearly never happened. Mm -hmm. Just because if this guy beat me, I wouldn't have gone, you know what I mean? So, so he was Russian, but he had an English passport? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, um, crazy, no? yeah, and I nearly uh, if he beat me, I wouldn't have gone. Yeah, but after that, you know, um, Terry had him come down to um, come down to the academy to to, to learn some wrestling because um, obviously he was, he was having his I think he was having his either first or second fight. It might have been his second fight in the UFC. Terry Atim was a UFC fighter for Team Carbon, the first one from Team Carbon, and um, he come down to the academy 
to um, to do some wrestling because he was coming up against a wrestler. And then he come down there and he asked me would I come to Liverpool and do some training with him stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's really how it come about, me starting MMA. Yeah, okay. So I, I went up to, to there and started just helping him out and doing some wrestling. And I did a bit of sparring and did a bit of tie boxing and I, I enjoyed it. I loved it, you know, it was like a new thing for me, you know, and the grappling especially. And that's how, that's how I got started really with MMA as well. Yeah, okay. And what year was that roughly? Two, five, well, I had my first... Probably, probably went down after the come of the come of games, and I think I had my first um, amateur fight in two thousand eleven. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's probably about probably after the come of games, two thousand ten. And how did you? Um, obviously, you said you loved it, but how did you find that the change in your wrestling dynamic with consideration for the striking? Yeah, the striking was the the hardest to 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 get used to. Yeah. Definitely, the grappling. Obviously, you know you're used to handling somebody's body when you're wrestling and stuff like that. You know, you have you still obviously get choked and stuff like that, but yeah, it was um it was the striking mainly that I, I struggled to transition over to. Yeah. Do you find it's um obviously when it's wrestler versus wrestler or grappler versus grappler, you know, to some extent you're very guarded in certain positions. Obviously with striking, there'll be um opportunities to maybe get on someone's hips a bit easier because they've thrown a kick or a punch. Yeah. Did you find that once you add in striking that the wrestling comes a little bit easier to to get to get the positions that you want? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, especially you know now after after a few years of, of learning it and stuff, I, I definitely um, understand that it's definitely it's easier to start gaining on a leg attack when you start throwing your punches and stuff like that. Yeah, and I, fi I, fi I find the the striking's easier when you can you start you know w working your wrestling into it as well. Yeah, I feel that you know there's some fights that I've had that like for example I'll use Lando Venata as an example. I fought Lando Venata in um, Texas mm -hmm. and. You know, his striking's phenomenal. You know, he's, he's, he's got some highlight real knockouts, which is, you know, when you're going to fight him, you think, wow, he's got a couple of spinning back, <laughs> spinning back heel kicks here and knocking people out. You know, you're like, I've got to watch that one. But when I fought him, it was like, because he was so worried about my wrestling yeah. and I was faking some takedowns and I did attack a lot in that fight, but he um, he started get, getting open up to backhands and I caught him with some heavy backhands, you know, and which hurt him, so... Yeah, I think the, the the wrestling helps the striking as well. Well, yeah, yeah the wrestling's definitely feared, isn't it? If you know you're against a wrestler straight away, you think, hell, if you're, if you're a striker, sake, like, it is hundred percent. Yeah, you think fuck's sake. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it changes your mindset. Yeah, no, it's a good point. Um, so when you went down and, and got into MMA, that, that that was with Team Calbon at that point. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously they've um, produced some um, some good fighters, um, Darren Till, Tom Aspinall, yourself, um, and widely considered, I guess, in the UK, one of the obviously one of the best teams in the yeah. country produced some of the best best caliber fighters i'm always interested to hear about the training that goes on in those sort of places um you know is it obviously it's going to be very structured and technical but like the mentality of the lads in there you know sort of what's the sparring like can you talk us through what the training's like at yeah. team cowboy maybe <laughs> back in the day versus now because i know things have probably moved on a little bit maybe yeah. not <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it has a little bit but it's yeah it's um I mean, when I first when I first ever went down to um, Team Carbon, obviously I was just there as a as a bit of a wrestling coach to help the lads with the wrestling and wrestle them as well. Uh, but when I did like try and get into mixed martial arts and get into the MMA, I um, I went to my first sparring session, and my first sparring session there was you had on the mat you had Terry Etim, Paul Kelly, Paul Taylor, Mark Scanlon. Paul Sass, that's five UFC fighters. Mm. <laughs> All in the UFC at the same time. Yeah. Who else was there? And a bunch of others that was, un, you know, great, great pro fighters that 100% could have been in the UFC. So you had probably about 15 on the mat then. And I went down to my first, um, first sparring and I got put on what was called the wall of death. Like, I didn't know what it was then, obviously, because I'd never been to sparring, but I knew how to wrestle. And... Um, Colin says to the, to the lads, who should we put on the wall of death today? And um, and he says, Mike and such a body. So there's two of us that got put on the wall of death. So basically what it is, you got put on the wall, uh, the cage wall, and you had your gloves on. You could just cover up, you couldn't hit back. You just had to get yourself off the fence. One by one, each guy would have to come on to, to, <laughs> to hit you. And... You'd have you know, to just get off the back of the fence. You'd have to get off the back of the fence, you know, and you Fuck was there no. for five... You had to be there, you, you was in five minutes fresh guy every every time you got off the fence or Colin said change but the guys would actually have to try and, try and finish you with body shots and, and even hit you out to the head so it was like things have changed since then 
but um, that was my that was my first introduction to to sparring. Really, how did you manage with that? I did all right because I could cover up and I could grab and I can turn them. You know, I could right. get off the fence quite quick. But yeah, still, it wasn't a nice. It wasn't nice because obviously you got you got some good 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 lads there. Do you know what I mean? And none none of them small. They're all heavy, they're all heavier than me at the time. So yeah, it was that was that was um, an introduction to MMA for me. But yeah, the, I mean, technically, Colin is is. Um, you know he's so intelligent. He understands every part of every part of mixed martial arts. You know he's come from a Thai boxing background, but he's also now a black belt in uh, jiu jitsu and he's a black belt in luta libre as well, which is um, you know like nogi in. in I was going to ask you about that because uh, Hess ma- mentioned that luta luta libre. I don't yeah. really know what it was. I, lo- I looked into it a little bit, but it's similar to jiu jitsu, isn't it? But it's like a different. It's jiu jitsu. Yeah, you, you start obviously start on your feet. You know, there's, there's, you've got your heel locks and everything like that in there. But basically, I think it's in in Brazil. You've got your uh, jiu-jitsu in the game you've got your luta livre and it's more like a poor man sport in, in in brazil you know the guys who couldn't afford a gay they'd go to luta livre type of right, thing okay. and, and that's how it was but yeah it's uh i'd say luta livre you've got a lot more whereas like, like jiu-jitsu you can't do heel hooks and certain locks can you but in luta livre everything pretty much goes you know is it uh, with locks oh, wow. yeah. yeah still neck cranks and stuff G- like that so I think. It, so do you do that we, we, yeah, we have, i'm grading purple in that purple belt um and then i'm a brown belt in in uh, jiu-jitsu in the gi uh, but my coach is per black in both of them but it, like I say from a, for, he's got a very strong Thai boxing background he's, he's created some world champions in that um, so yeah Colin's an absolute master on, on, on the coaching side of things you know he, he knows all his athletes and he knows how to squeeze every last little bit out of them you know um, and yeah the, the training is very technical but it is very it's very, it's very military you know you 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 can't really. I mean, I'm, I'm used to the rules kind of thing, but you know, you can't go in and you can't you can't really be talking when he's kind of try, you know explaining something. You know, you've got to have the general rules as as what you should have when you go on the mat, the respect. But he's um, yeah, he's, he's he's a great coach, and that's why he's produced um, nine, nine that's good UFC though, fighters. Yeah, but that's what you yeah, want, though, yeah. isn't it? That's what you want. You want that respect. You in, the, in this day and age, mate. There's not enough of it around, is there? Yeah, there's not enough discipline. There's not enough fucking. No, there's a lot of discipline of though. You know, but you, you don't fuck about when he's when he's around. You know what I mean? He's he means business, and like I said, that's why he's created so many, so many um, UFC fighters. Yeah, some of the lads that you just mentioned. Then actually, when you first went down, yeah, I remember those guys back in the day. Yeah, wasn't Paul Sass? He was like the fucking triangle dude, wasn't he? Oh, he triangled everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Did he? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, did, I'm sure he won something ridiculous, like nine nine straight wins with triangle. Yeah, yeah. Was mad, wasn't it? He's got some kind of record, I think. But Joe Rogan even goes on about him quite a lot. Yeah, does he? Yeah, he still he still mentions him in his podcast and stuff when he goes on about. Um, jiu-jitsu and stuff or yeah. UFC says he talks about triangles get hurt it's triangle I'm trying to call him triangle that's how good <laughs> <laughs> that's how good Sassy's um, triangle is yeah mate he's that's mad or has yeah. he just got ridiculously long legs or he's got a very strong grip and he's oh, just yeah he's, he just gets you in it and you're fucked yeah once he's got you your wrists he's, he's quite hard to get out of mm. Yeah, you have to check him out on them. Um, yeah, I know, I would, I would definitely, yeah, yeah. Was I would what, are any of those lads still competing? Are they all, they all retired now? I've not had some of those names for years, to be fair. Yeah, um, Ter- Terry's not competing. Terry's, Terry's, um, he's in the gym, though. He helps coach the kids and stuff, which is, which is you know, good to see. Um, no, competing-wise, it's not, not none of the old school ones that's that's been there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um so you were there for a bit and then obviously started competing amateur and then got to, to sort of the professional level. Um, so you got your bronze medal in Commonwealth Games 2014 yep. and then started competing in pro MMA from there. Looking back, do you ever wish you got into competing pro and MMA any sooner? Yeah, I do, yeah. I do um, wish I'd have found the sport earlier. Um, you know, I did start quite late. Luckily enough, I did have the, the back wrestling background to help me. But, you know, there's also there are also always some mistakes within wrestling that... that doesn't help your MMA, you know, as well, I'd say. But, um, yeah, I do wish I got into it earlier. Yeah, it's true of our lives, mate, huh? <laughs> oh, fuck, you know, tell me <laughs> like all the time about jiu-jitsu. That's all I say, mate. <laughs> I, only, I only literally started a year ago, and it just fucking, it breaks me, because I think I've just wasted so many years not, <laughs> not doing it. You know? <laughs> Could be me, mate. I started about 15 years ago. I've been in and out constantly, so very slow progress, <laughs> you gotta, mate. You've got to be consistent, aren't you? Yeah, yeah indeed, mate. mate consistent, know, disciplined, mate. it's important. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, so I think when you got to the UFC, you were like 12-1 and one at that point, weren't you? So yeah. pretty good record. So talk us through those sort of early days of competing professionally. So, so how that first fight felt at pro, how it went. Um, obviously, you, you suffered a loss at some point along the way as well. Can you just chat through that early career? 
Yeah, I went to my first pro fight was on Bama, so it was at the time was probably it was for a pro, first. Obviously, I just I had a bit of um, momentum behind me because I just got a bronze at Commonwealth Games, so there's a bit of hype then for that. No wrestlers really in the country who's even done that. So to come into mixed martial arts, they was they was they like that, you know. But and Bama was the probably big one then, you know. When I when I started, it was the probably the biggest in UK really, possibly in Europe. So um, yeah, I got I got my first one in Bama. I won. I won my first. I won that one with a dars. Um, so it was, it was quite quick, to be honest. He was against a decent opponent. And he, he had he had about fifteen fights on his record, you know, winning know. record as well. So it was like, obviously, I was on my first debut, but <laughs> they chucked, took, chucked you in the deep end. Then I think they put the, <laughs> I think they, I think they put the wrestling record in, in my in my thing, yeah, in my stats. <laughs> but no, was, I ended up against him. Yeah, I beat him with a dars. Uh, second fight, um, I won with a dars again. Das Chuck, mm -hmm. they're both quite quick, and then, and he, he had a good record as well. Um, I think he's Mike Cutting, I think it was. Yeah, he um, he was like a winning record, seven and four or something. Mm -hmm. And then my third fight, I I come against a French kid. He was seven and one. He was um, he was knocking people out. You know, he was, he was, he was quite good. Uh, and. I won him with a dice in the first round, so the, there's the three dices for my first. So you first like a dice, then, yeah? Like, I do like <laughs> a dice, yeah. Yeah, I do like a dice. Um, and then my fourth fight is the one I, the one I lost. Okay. I come up against a, a Polish kid. He was a karate world champion, but a brown belt in jiu jitsu. I didn't even have a belt in jiu jitsu at the time then. No belt, you know. So um, he was eight and one. Um, he actually got signed to the UFC the week after he beat me. Oh no way! Yeah, Fuck so um, that's that's where it was at then. But yeah, he beat me. Um, I got I got caught I, I, first round. I, I, I took him down and I, I ground and pounded for the full round. I smashed him the first round. To be honest, second round he caught me with a spinning back kick right to the sternum. Oh. <laughs> I, I would have rather him kick me to the chin and not know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's actually a picture. I don't know where the photographer got the picture, but he sent it me a couple of weeks later and he got the picture and his heels right in. Just, my, my, my body's just creased in. Oh. So he's, um, his heels right in my sternum and um, it, it dropped me. I just couldn't, I couldn't breathe. And um, I just remember, from then I remember obviously the, the ref, because he was he come to try and finish, the ref said, you know, you've got to fight back type thing. So I just managed to latch onto his legs and finish the double, but I still couldn't breathe. Mm. So I managed to just lay on top of him for a minute. Um, and this was early in the round as well. And I, I survived till about four and a half minutes. And I just, because I, I couldn't breathe, I just like, I, I postured up to just try and finish the fight and punch him. And fell into a triangle and got put asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I ended up, and going to sleep on that, and then lost the fight four and a half minutes second round. But yeah, that was um, that was a, a big lesson learned. Yeah. I learned a lot from that because, you know, I sh what I should have done is just held him down and rested, mm -hmm. and just tried to just get to the ne that next next round. Yeah. But I think I found this when I fought a couple of times at amateur. The, the refs always in your ear. If you're just sort of laying on somebody, the refs in your ear to work normally, right? So almost to some extent, you're thinking about that. So you're going to try and move a little bit. What they bit. tell you, yeah. they're like, oh, mine did, yeah. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it amateur more so, innit? Yeah, maybe. More so at amateur, yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah, so certainly in bad positions, like you said, if, you, if, you, if you're kind of getting filled in a little bit, you're going to get the ref having a word telling you to defend yourself. So that makes you take action and sometimes yeah. there's not always the right action. Um, but then, yeah, sometimes when you're on top as well, when you yeah, might want to rest, you want to probably move. You so. also feel it when he's close as well. Mm, Even yeah. if he's not saying anything, you, f you, f you feel it when he's close. You think, oh, he's close here, I'm going to go. <laughs> finish, you know, so. yeah. yeah, and how did you feel after that that loss then? Because that was obviously, I don't know, what, your, what was your amateur record? My amateur was, um, that, that was my pro, that. Yeah, yeah. Pro, sorry. My amateur was six and all, I'd not lost. Yeah, so you first lost it under MMA yeah. rules of some sort. Yeah, so was, how, how did that make you feel? Yeah, I was... Obviously, I was gutted. I mean, it was um, because obviously coming from the wrestling background and a lot of people had a, a lot of big eye hopes and stuff for me. Then he was like, oh, he's a wrestler. He's I was training with a lot of high names, you know, like Terry and all them. So there's big, big hopes for me, you know. But so when I lost, it was like I felt myself. I'd kind of like, oh, am I going to make it now? You know what I mean? Mm. Um, because me going into fighting it was the only goal was to, to get to the FC yeah okay you know there was never any any other other way there was I was never going to not be in the FC mm -hmm. in my mind 
So um, I, I then I kind of thought that was the only time I kind of doubted myself a little bit because I had that unbeaten confidence before that. Yeah. I'd had six uh, six pro, uh, six amateur, and I had three pro and I'd won them all. And I, I'd just come off a Commonwealth Games medal. I was I was thriving. My confidence was sky high. You know what I mean? And then you know that just knocked me down a peg or two. And then you obviously went on a bit of a tear after that, didn't you? I did, yeah. So. I went on the, like a 10, 9, 10 fight winning streak then. Yeah. So was it about, just to think about when I was looking at your record last night, was it about four years or so before you then got into the UFC from that point? So that would have been, yeah, um, probably about four or five years, yeah. Yeah, okay. After that, I got to UFC. Yeah. What was it like getting, how, how, did, you, how did you get into UFC? Do they call you up? to stay there no, give you a call, was... mate, and say, do you want to come in? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a video, um, my coach, what my coach did, so obviously Till was in the UFC and he was he was fighting there for titles and stuff like that. So um, my coach got me. He got he got he got a, the class the busiest class probably in the gym, which was the Thai boxing and the, the MMA class. He um, he sat everyone down. He got everyone in. He got and he, he got Till up um, and speaking about Darren first. So he was saying, "Oh, Darren, you've done this, and you, you, you know, you're going to go for the world title soon. I think it was before the world title, maybe. Yeah, it was. So before he fought Tyron Woodley, so he got Darren up and he said, you're going to go for the world title. And he says, and we've got Mike on the other end of the spectrum. He didn't tell me. He never told me. I've seen the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> Mike on the other end of the spectrum. You know, he's he's been trying to get in the UFC for this many years. He's been training since he was six, and um, he says, how long have we been trying to get in the UFC now, Mike? I says, since I started, you know, and." And um, he says, "Have we done it yet?" I says, "No." He, yes, we have. So he, he, you know, he, Class. he he had he had a UFC contract in his hand, and he called me up, and you know, it was all on video, but it's on video somewhere on, on online on it? YouTube. Yeah. How did you feel? Oh, it was it was, uh, it was unreal. Yeah, because that was, you know, the the it's just the the sacrifices you make. It's it's ridiculous. You would never never really understand it until you lived it. You know, I, I and I've probably done it twice as longer than most people who's, who's who's in the UFC because wrestling, like I said, didn't pay well. I didn't even get anything. You know, I've done from um, 16 years age, full time athlete to 20 odd going to the you know going to fighting with nothing. And I and I had a I had a, I had a son at 17. Yeah. So um, I was young. I had to support a family from 17. You know. So um, all the sacrifices I made through my wrestling and then obviously going into fighting. It was like starting all over again. So it was just a, it was just a grind, an absolute grind. With with outside of the the sport and inside of the training, you know, it was tough. So to to get that contract, and it was like, yeah, I'm gonna okay, this can change my life now. Yeah, you know, my family's life is what they de they deserve as well. So it was um, it was like it's an crazy, overwhelming man. yeah, I can imagine you know position to be in, especially when you say like financially for most people that are up, up and coming even if you are real high level there's no money in it no there's no money until you like said you get to UFC or you get to that elite level yeah and you're on those big shows you know it's, it's, there's so many guys that even train up flow and train you know all over the UK that are probably really good nationally yeah but and fuck all money and the dedication they take to get to that next level is fucking crazy I see it every day in the gym and I think yeah, you, you know you just want the boys to get there don't you you know what I mean you want the people that are doing that to actually fucking make that it. next plunge you know and it's tough isn't it because not everyone does and people outside I, I don't know about you, you and your family but people don't, outside don't seem to understand that does that make sense no, they, no. they think oh why is he still fucking give up you know do this yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you probably had it you know, oh, I had it yeah yeah, life, I did, you know? yeah. they just don't seem to understand do they mm. I wanted to ask when you when you um, when you get the contract for the UFC, is it like because I think it was the London card that you fought on, wasn't it? I did, yeah. Yeah. So is that just like that? That was it, like one and done, or is it like a four fight deal at that point? Like what did you what did you get? What's that initial contract say? Is it just a one fight, or is it several fights? It's a four four fight contract. Is it? But it's always in the UFC's favor. You can they can kick you out whenever. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, but it's it's classed as a four fight contract, okay. but. Did I mean if you if you did something or you did you had some bad performances you'd be out in one or two even I know somebody who's been out in one really, really? yeah okay. she's mad really but yeah so four fights it is yeah okay exciting and um, how'd your first fight go I, I won my debut yeah so um, obviously in London was good to be in London because I had not actually fought in UK for five years before that. No four way. Or five years. What's so all your fights? All the other fights the, were all all well, away. Sorry, yeah, about four years. So I had 
Uh, Brazil. I've went and won it. I won a belt over in Brazil. Um, I won in Shuto, Japan. Um, sorry, I did. So it may be three years it was, but I, I won in, um, a local show in, in UK. But yeah, I'd, I'd not pro I'd not fought properly for years in, in, in UK. Um, so yeah, my debut, you know, it was against Nad Naramani. Uh, it was, you know, he was he was on a two fight, two or three fight winning streak in the UFC. So it was it was a tough opponent to give me. He was obviously Cage Warriors champion. He beat he beat Paddy Pimlet for the belt. Um, so he was on a tear up, five fight winning streak, two or three fights in the UFC winning, and um, that's who they gave me for a debut. And I was actually I didn't know till after the after I fought him in 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 uh, London that I possibly could have fought him in Bama early doors. Mm -hmm. Um, but it didn't come about, and um, so obviously, yeah, we got we got to fight in the UFC in in London, and I three weeks before that fight, I got a Greg two ligament to uh, to hamstring to on my on my hamstrings, so oh, I, I was I was training and I went in for a leg attack, and as a, the lad had sprawled, I kind of got my leg got trapped a little bit, and I tore my hamstring before that. So for three weeks before that, I was just um, stood. Stood still on, on the pads boxing to just make weight or sometimes I'd box spare in the pocket so I wasn't moving too much and stuff. But I didn't wrestle until the warm-up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> until no the warm-up. So my air game had gone. My wrestling had gone. Um, so I got in the warm-up room and I was warming up with Terry, Terry Etting. And Terry's like, he's just 100 miles an hour all the time, whatever, you, whatever you're doing. He's, he's competitive even if you're warming up with him. So he's very, very competitive. So I was warming up with Terry and uh, Colin McCourt says, shoot some leg attacks. So I'd shot one leg attack uh, on my other side where it didn't affect my hamstring. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he, he went, no, attack properly, you know. And, um, and I attacked on my normal side and Terry had sprawled a little bit and I felt my hamstring straight away. Mm -hmm. So it didn't, nothing happened, you know, it didn't twinge, but I could I could just tw feel it twinging. I thought, this is this could easily snap. So, um, in my back of my mind, I said, "Well, there's no way I'm, I'm not. I'm going. You know what I mean? I'm going. I'm walking. So, I'm um, I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna box. I'm just gonna box this fight. So that's that. Obviously, not my A game. You know, my A game's grappling. But so that was what I had in my back of my mind before I went out, and it worked out well in the end because I ended up TKO in that. So I um, he just you could just see from the second we touched gloves." He was just so worried about, not just worried about my tail, and he was just showing everything that straight away. He was like twitching his knee all the time and twitching his knee, and I'm thinking, I'm not even going to attack. <laughs> I'm not even going to attack. <laughs> it's your lucky way. day. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and then he was faking backhands. So he, sh he shadowed a lot of stuff before I even went close to him. So, um, yeah, I, I started faking attacks and throwing backhands, and there was everyone was connecting. So, um that was the first the first round, you know, I, I connected a lot of backhands and I think I did one leg attack and I actually felt my hamstring a little bit in that one leg attack. And I took him down and then I kind of he got he got up and um that was the first round done. Second round was quite an entertaining one to be honest. He um he caught me with a left uppercut and backhand. Yeah, was this the, uh, was this the slip, mate, was it? That was a slip. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slip, yeah. Um he caught me with a backhand and wobbled me. And I was just like, I was okay, but obviously it was like, you know, you knew you was a bit wobbled. Yeah. Um, but I recovered quite, I recovered quite quick, and he mustn't have thought I'd recovered. Anyway, I I come back and caught him with left hook and TKO him. But yeah, Dan Dan Hardy was uh, interviewing me after, and I says, <laughs> and he says, look at the screen. I didn't look at the screen. He says, look at the screen. Um, how did you feel when he caught you? And I went, oh, no, no, I got slipped. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it wasn't a slip, obviously. Yeah, that's class, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, that was, I think that was, was that, that pro, that was your first TKO win as well, wasn't it, I think? It was my first TKO Fucking time of doing that, yeah. Yeah. How did yeah. you feel when winning that? It must have been unbelievable, wasn't it? Well, it, it was that. like... Fucking hell. I guess relief at that point, though, because oh, yeah. the, the fear yeah. you must have had going into your debut UFC, massive opportunity, seeing lads get cut first fight. Yeah. Injury, so... It was, yeah. It was a big, big relief, obviously, yeah, to, to, to you know, to do that. But um, I mean, I remember, obviously, not wrestling as much is much more easier on the body. It's like when you wrestle a lot, it's like it's, it's tiring, isn't it. So it's like I could, I could, I could easily get used to the striking a lot more. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's much easier striking. 
yeah. that, that it is um, that it is wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll second that, mate, for sure. Fucking hell. <laughs> I think most things I think are I remember easier going out after the right. first round thinking, I'm not tired here. Yeah. Because I've not wrestled, you know. But, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was definitely Grappling's easier. fucking hard, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it takes you out of you. Yeah. Were you, um, I know you used to corner some of the lads as well, didn't you? Um, were you cornering that night for Till? I did. I stayed on. I stayed in the back and um, helped Till out because, you know, Till, me and Till, trained a lot a lot together you know we um, you know we was the only two that was in the UFC at the time and he's my wrestling helped his, his game because and his striking helped my game obviously he was heavier than me and he, fucking, he was so heavy handed <laughs> was he, he? he hit hard he hit very hard yeah well, even, his, even his sparring oh even his sparring was yeah he, he's, he wobbled you in training he wobbled me a couple mm. of times in training yeah but he's um, he's very heavy handed mm-hmm. but um, yeah so we, we trained a lot together and obviously I coached him his wrestling and stuff like that so yeah there was no way I wouldn't, would not would not be in his corner mm. a lot of people were surprised because obviously I, I could have gone out and enjoyed it with my fans and friends and family and whatever but you know I stayed back with him and and um, you know I enjoyed it with him it didn't go his way but mm, that was the uh, Masvidal fight wasn't it the Masvidal yeah yeah it must have been tough to watch from the sidelines mate it was a pretty fucking bad one wasn't it it was a bad one yeah it was it was it was a nice finish but it was um, it was a tough one to watch for us yeah yeah, obviously that was that was I think after the Woodley match for him as well, was it? Yes, we'd lost to Woodley. His first loss, wasn't it, to Woodley, yeah. obviously. He'd not lost before that. No. And then um yeah, his his second lost to with Masvidal. Yeah. How was he um how was he after that, mate? Yeah, it was it was a tough time for him, you know, he's because he, he was on he was big hype around him, wasn't he? He yeah, beat Cerrone yeah. and he just skyrocketed then after after Cerrone, you know, and yeah, it was a tough time for him, and it was a bit, a bit of a downhill slope for him then, you know. Mm. But um, do you think that was? Do you think that hype was appropriate at the time, or do you think, looking back, it was, it was too quick for him to get to that level? No, he, he was, he was there, you know, and he, he run his mouth well, didn't he? You yeah. know? But um, I mean, that's his personality. To be honest, that's that's how he is, and I don't mind that when somebody's like that. You know, if that's naturally how you are, yeah. be like that. But I just, what I don't don't like is when they, they come across real too fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? they really they're really forcing try. it, mate. They're yeah, not, when they force it, it's a bit too much. But he actually is like that, so yeah, he's uh, hingy. But um, do, do I think it was too early? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. He just needed to probably be a little bit more professional himself and a bit more disciplined. And you know, you've got to take a bit of ownership on that. And he just um, he just needed to 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 rein it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously, since then, it's been a. Yeah, it's not gone, not gone great. The record has it been a bit of a scare. He's obviously had the one win, which is a tough fight. But yeah, I mean, where do you see his career going from here? I mean, obviously he took his he took himself out of the UFC, hasn't he? but um, I don't know. I mean, there's obviously talks of him boxing, maybe, maybe bare knuckle. I don't know, but <laughs> I've not spoke to him. Not spoke to him for a few weeks, but yeah, I just hope he's he gets back, you know, to the right in the right direction because. I always believed with Till, you know, when he was training with us, he always said he was going to be the two or three weight world champion, and I always believed that he that he could be, and I still I still do feel because he's so talented. I was about to say, yeah, he's unbelievable unreal. talent, isn't he? unreal. Yeah. He's um, so he's, he's intelligent when he fights. He's um, he's 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 a, he's a great he's a great thing. He's an unreal fighter, you know what I mean? He's one of the best to ever come out to see in Carbon, and he's um, he can do he can do really well. And I think he, can, he can, I think he still can be the world champion, you know, if he comes back to, to oh, fight. He's, he's only he's still fairly young, isn't he? I think he's thirty now. Yeah, so, fuck all. yeah so he's, yeah, he's right. still got yeah, time. That's fuck you know all, I mean? is it? Yeah, he's still got loads of time, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I still think he can do it. And what a story to be, wasn't it? You know, if he yeah, if he, he did that, you know, he went on a bit of a losing streak and he come out, he did well in boxing, maybe or whatever he chooses to do, and then he goes comes back and he gets the UFC UFC belt because someone like Till, he's only one tweet away from from thinking, <laughs> he's only one tweet away from being fighting for a title. You know what I mean? He says something mad on on thing. I'll give Pierce Morgan some shit. He's gonna get. He's gonna get a title fight. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how yeah. he is. Yeah, fair one. So you obviously had your win. Um, obviously, nursing this injury. So I can't remember where we are in regard to timeline with the pandemic and everything else. Because um, I think um, the last lad you fought, I think you were due to fight him a bit earlier on, weren't you? Just before the pandemic, is that right? On the, I think it was the Edwards and Woodley card, actually, wasn't it? Uh, Mac one. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was supposed to fight Mac one earlier. Yeah. Yeah. 
but pandemic it was, was it? a week before a week a week before oh, I was supposed to fight we, we, everything got locked down and shut off yeah fucking nightmare it was mad so how was um, was there much of a recovery with the hamstring like from that last fight to the next fight whenever that was yeah um, how was your rehab on that so I wanted to ask about your injuries mate because the, the little bit of dabbling I've done with wrestling over the years is fucking tough on the body yeah, it is yeah that's probably because I'm, I'm, I'm weak and frail but <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of injuries that come with that just by the nature of it yeah there's the with, with wrestling there is um, I've not had obviously no career end obviously mm. but um, I've had some bad injuries um, but I mean I think with wrestling I think if you started at a very young age like I started at six you know your body does get get used to it a little bit more I think it's a lot harder and a lot more injury prone if you start a little bit later mm. so if you started even I'm talking like teenagers 15, 16 mm. I've not seen many many people start wrestling at like 16 year old let's say yeah and do, you know, do great things with him wrestling and um, even get used to just the, the the workload your body's got to be put free. Mm -hmm. um, just the kids that's come through, the, the, you know, they get they get used to the, the, to the, the body yeah. and handling it. Like I, um, like I say, I started at six and I feel, I feel better on the mat than I do off the, getting up in the morning out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I'm wrestling on the mat and I feel more comfortable and more supple. But I get up in the morning, my back, my back sore, my knees are sore. And stuff I think, like I think you're right though so. with with grappling. Obviously, I I started jujitsu late, and then that first six months, I had like intercostal injuries and this injury. <laughs> back was killing. You know, I never had any sort of injuries when I played football. Yeah. And then like putting on my socks one day, back went. I was like laid in bed, like oh <laughs> fucking hell, like yeah. dying and things like that. So yeah, but now I feel like I'm used to it. Does that make sense? Like I feel like yeah. my body is used to now being on the mats every day, and it feels normal and I say to a lot of the white belts when they first start and they're saying oh my fucking back's killing my ribs are killing this is killing like it does it does go if you yeah. just keep fucking training just got to kind of like have that little rest and then carry on yeah. but yeah isn't that consistency you talked about is key as well isn't it consistency you've got that mentality to just get through it haven't you yeah, yeah. 100% yeah. yeah so what is the worst injury you've ever had and then we'll get back to the hamstring um I've got I've had two shoulder operations a few knee, a two knee I've had a jaw operation and uh, elbow operation. I probably said that's quite a few. <laughs> that's fucking hell. I was I know, thinking. Yeah. I was thinking he's going to say maybe like a dislocated shoulder or something. But <laughs> fucking hell. No, I've not actually broke much. It's mm. all ligament tears yeah, with yeah. the wrestling. Yeah. So my knees, my knees, my, my knees are bad uh, with the with the ligament tears. I've torn my right one quite a few times because that's my lead leg what I attack on. So now that I'll be mid training, honest, once a week it comes out. So I have to just stop and put it back in. Your knee so comes out. It comes out, yeah. It just pops out, and I have to just like I say, stop a second and just yeah. put it back in. It's yeah. come out. It's come out in fight. Come out in the fight against Nad. Did it? Yeah. I just, I just like flick, flick, kick a little bit, and it goes back in. <laughs> no. Because I think way. if you, I don't know if you, if you watch it back on the video when I'm against Nad, I throw a right body kick, I think, and it come out when I threw the right body kick. So I step back and I, f I kick it, but I think he thought I was hurt. And he come towards me quick, but I wasn't. I just once he goes back in, I'm fine. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it went, comes out. Yeah, it's happened quite a few times. Yeah. Have you got an ACL on that side? I don't know. Is it still attached? You know, <laughs> probably, probably, <laughs> not. Not. Like yeah. <laughs> probably not got any ACLs, no. but yeah, um, I don't know what the problem. Maybe my shoulders give me yeah. more stick. I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely common, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Neck, <laughs> People don't neck's bad as well. Neck, you know, yeah. your, neck, your neck's... That's, you know, that's, that's what I'm, I've been finding since I... Um, when you shoot and you try and like... Yeah, you're pushing with your head all the time. Your head. I've been having a fucking... My yeah. neck's been stiff because I've only really recently started it. So when you turn it to get a single leg or double leg and fucking yeah. get on there, it's, mm. it is hard on the neck. Yeah, I've got to build up your neck strength and stuff, like your front bridge and back bridges. But like I said, we, I've been doing them since I was six. Yeah. Front bridge and back bridge. You know, so you have got to do it every session yeah. when you wrestle. Yeah, and I think that keeping that strength so key as well. So I had I had like two years off during the pandemic, did nothing at all. Prior to that, I was a little bit sporadic, but there was definitely periods over the years where I've been a bit more consistent. Yeah, and I found when I came back after two years, my neck was fucked. Yeah, because you, you say that. Too, yeah, it's yeah. getting better <laughs> now, but same thing. I I'd, I'd always use my head on on a particular side yeah. and would shoot in for a double leg on a particular side, and it was fine. My neck was conditioned to it, but. Once I stopped training and my neck all week, and then I came back to it, fucking hell, yeah. Honestly, mate, yeah, spasms galore. I could barely move my neck half the time. Yeah, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, yeah it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Happy days. Right, so, um, so yeah, you obviously got your first fight, you got the injury. So that must have been a bit annoying, I guess, because you just want to, I guess, after that, just crack on and, and keep pushing forward, right? 
Yeah. But there was obviously a period of time where you had to do your rehabilitation. And then your next fight scheduled after that, was that then the one that got cancelled because of the pandemic? Or did you have another one in, in between? No, I actually was supposed to fight the Russian kid, Evloev, in China. Okay. Yeah, so I ended up fighting him eventually. Yeah. Obviously, Evloev. But um, I was supposed to fight him in China probably about... It was about three, four months, about four months later, I was supposed to fight him. And then I got back into camp for that. I'd, I'd sorted my hamstring. I, I had some time off. And I, like I say, I'm lucky enough. I, I got sponsored. I got sponsored by a, a physio company called Summit Physio. And, and they've got like a few depots. They've got like the auction chamber and things like that. So I did that a lot. Plus I got physio on it. So it, it did heal pretty well, to be honest. Um, so I got back in training pretty early. And uh, I was supposed to fight him. And then probably about few weeks before the fight um, I, I broke my rib till need me in the rib fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah. handed so fucker I, he's, he's <laughs> so I shot a double in it on my way out he'd, he'd throw a knee yeah. or not not even like hard he just yeah. placed it right but when you're three weeks out from fight and you, you're cutting weight you're low on calories your ribs are all exposed anyway it's just so easy so yeah that, that happened and um I had to pull out that fight and then they rescheduled it for, I can't remember what it was, it was a bit after that. So I ended up fighting him mm. in um, the pandemic, one of the pandemics, wasn't it? Yeah, the pand when the, the pandemic it was, yeah. yeah. Where did you fight? Cause I, yeah, because that's when I was supposed to fight Mac one, sorry. Yeah. Then they, 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 they cancelled that because of pandemic and then I ended up fighting Movsa in um, Fight Island. Yeah, okay. What was it like out there? Yeah, it was mad. It was, um, they kind of did shut off you know, a 10 mile radius for us, you know, like even if you go to the beach, you've got just an area just for us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? tested. And it was like a good few hundred meters as well, you know, so, and even like the guys who had to rent us the jet skis were tested mm -hmm. to go on that bit. Everyone who was on that bit was tested mm -hmm. for COVID because cause we was there. So yeah. Yeah, it was well looked after. Like we got that must have been so surreal for you, though. Crazy like, you because must have fucking, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's that's how the world was just at a standstill. Yeah. You know, there was no one doing anything. There was no live sport, and that's where Dana cracked it, didn't he? You know, he, yeah, he, he, well he smashed that. it, didn't he? But yeah, so we went. To, he he travelled. He, he must have. I don't know whatever he did. He did. We got some deal with Emirates, so we all went first class. All the fighters went first class, so that was unreal. But it was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I mean, it was. The, f the food you get like you got offered fillet steaks and stuff I couldn't really eat much on the way because I was cutting weight and then the way back I broke my jar during the fight so I couldn't eat much on the oh. way back <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> yeah. so it's like a good bag with you mate yeah it was but the, 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 the first class was was unreal yeah especially on them kind of flights but yeah the fight um, didn't go my way I um, early doors I actually I took him down early doors um, Movsar and I thought it was one of the punches that done my jaw, but it wasn't, it was, I cracked my jaw, either on his knee on the way or on his hip. Mm. And um, and then when he's punched me a little later in the round, it's kind of it probably made it worse. And I just couldn't, I couldn't see. It was like, everything was really blurry um, where, to where I could only see a figure. And um, I remember after the first round, I just stood in the middle of the cage and waited for the cut man to come and take me to the cage because I didn't know where my, wall, my corner was. That's how, how you kind of... It's a weird feeling, it. isn't it? When you get that blurred. I've yeah, fractured was, my eye socket before and it's... Uh... Yeah, well, it was the, it was like the bridge, this bridge here, mm. it just broke in three places so it'd gone in that way, like... That's what mine done. There, yeah. there, and I've fractured it there. Right. So it's, it's a weird fucking feeling, isn't it? Because it's exactly yeah. that. You, you kind of like... It happens, you think you're all right. Yeah. And then you think fuck you know I can't kind of see and then before you know it you don't know where you, you're really disorientated that's how, how I felt that, that's, how, that's how it was yeah and this is the end of the first round this yeah so well I, I, I felt it early doors but the, when he punched me, he caught me with right hand mm. that kind of made me just go like blind not blind but I was like I couldn't yeah. see I could barely yeah, see yeah. Yeah, that's weird I just remember there's probably there wasn't much left in that round I just remember going backwards and I couldn't see much, and God help was close. I could see a figure of him, I could see a figure of who, who Moffs out in front of me. He was kind of trying to put it on me. So I just kind of threw something and just shot for a leg attack. I think I got him down. Um, and then the second round, like I said, I stood in the middle of the ring, the cage, and the cut man took me to my corner because I didn't know where it was. I didn't say anything to my coach because I thought, you know what, just, there's no point, is there? Because some 
the fans are ridiculous. They think you're making an excuse. Um, <laughs> so I didn't say anything. And then also, it's not going to change anything. I'm still going to fight. I'm not going to stop fighting now. So it was never going to change anything. Yeah, so and I think if you no do... point saying anything. Yeah, and if you do mention that sort of thing and someone overhears it, that's when you get the dock in as well and yeah. trying to stop stuff. So. And it makes that story in your own head as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Well, I've kind of got an excuse or whatever. Is that yeah. I'm thinking so. No, I would never mention it. So I just, I just cracked on. Um, I mean, that first round, I wish he'd have just tapped because <laughs> I got, I got a das. Mm. I was about to say, yeah, I watched it back recently. And yeah, you minute, fucking, that was tight as fuck. As it was well, tight, it? but it's just obviously renowned for just not tapping. So, um, but it was tight. Yeah, he was gargling. He was, that was his last breath of getting out, but he got out. So you know, fair play to him. But yeah, the second round, he. Um, I just like I say, my vision started coming back probably halfway through the second round a little bit. But yeah, it was um, it was a weird fight because, like I say, the jaw was just just dictated that fight really. I think it could have been um, a different fight if if my jaw if I didn't break my jaw the first round. But that's fighting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely, mate. And that was a decision, I think. Was it? Was that the yeah. split or the unanimous? That one. A unanimous. That one. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then you had another injury to, to sort out in your jaw, and then yeah. what was that an operation? Yeah. So um, they took us. I come out even before Till had fought. He, he was fighting Whitaker that night, I think. Um, I come out and I had to go straight to the hospital. It was a nightmare because obviously COVID. Yeah. While we was over there, if you'd been to the hospital, you had to um, isolate in your room till you got your flight on. So I had to go back and go and sit in my room till I could go on. So I was just, yeah, I wasn't happy. Yeah, was fucking, <laughs> I was about to say, you must have been fucking fuming. And then the, fuming, people like. come into our rooms telling you to put these suits on that, you know, like these all these white suits and stuff that you, you have to go out in. I says, there's no chance I'm putting that on. I'm going out in my own clothes. I'm not walking around in that. So I didn't put it on and went. Mm. And went but, <laughs> yeah, and got a mask and stuff like that. So, but yeah, you, it was a nightmare time. But Yeah, so where was your head at then? Because obviously this was now your second, second loss of your career. Yeah. Um, obviously the first one in the UFC so now you're one and one in the UFC so yeah where was your head at at that point yeah I mean um, just I, I think you know with the UFC it was like you always have in the back of, am I going to get cut now mm. which is the wrong mentality for anyone who gets to the UFC don't have it do you know what I mean just go and perform and go and do what you got to do and enjoy it but um, for me that was my mentality and that no, I was is I would not do that again to myself. Do you know what I mean? Because it was like every single fight it was like, if I lose, I'm gonna get caught. I'm gonna get caught. If I don't perform, if they don't like the way I fight, do you know what I mean? I should not be. You shouldn't be thinking like that. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah. So that was in the back of my mind just because I'd lost, and it was only my first loss, and it wasn't a bad loss. Do you know what I mean? Mavsar's on a tear up now. He's never lost ever, and um, you know he's he's top ten now, and so yeah, he, um, that's where I was at really, just thinking. Is there a possibility we could get caught? Mm. You know, where we're gonna go next, kind of thing. So yeah. that was it, really. But that like, you think that like every fight, or I did. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then um, obviously didn't get cut. Um, and your next fight was was that the Apex? That one was that one's in uh, fight, and the next one was in Texas. Texas was quite an open place, wasn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, yeah. So talk, tell us, talk, so, uh, talk us for that fight then. So how long ago? Yeah. So. Um, Colin, my coach, said they've offered you a fight, but um, it's, it, it's a guy from light. They, they said this, he thought it was a lightweight, so he said they've offered you a fight, but I've told him no because it's lightweight. You're a light, you're a featherweight, and then he, they come back to him and says no, Lando's cut into featherweight. We want Mike to introduce him to the featherweight kind of thing. So um, we said yeah, we'll we'll take that fight. You know, he's obviously a very dangerous striker, great fighter. Tony Ferguson, he, he nearly finished him. Um, He's come off some highlight real knockouts, yeah, yeah. you know. So he's he's a very good fighter and very un he's a very unorthodox um, wrestler. Mm. You know, he, he surprised me with a couple of things. But um, yeah, that fight, I um, I wrestled. I, I was, I was about, no, yeah. So I wrestled a lot for that fight um, because obviously that was the game, you know, to to, to take him down and, and grind him out. And I did, you know, I took him down a few times. He got up a few times, but he was he just done orthodox some things he did uh, that was, I wasn't really used to. For example, like I'd take him down and he'd get up on the fence, but he he wouldn't even turn and face me on the fence. He'd turn away towards the fence and fight my grips, mm. which I thought was quite, in the end, intelligent. That's like, clever, isn't it? Yeah. Little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just turn into me. Just turn into me so I can take you double. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he, um, he didn't turn into me. So he was just like fighting the grips. The second my grip broke, he was gone, he was out. 
you know. So um, he, he was he was he was good. He was tricky. Yeah. And then obviously you know he's in the back of the mind. You've got to have you know you you got some highlight reel knockouts. You got to watch them. But uh, it was a close fight. It was a split decision. But a lot of people say I won, even on you know on the way on the way back in the in the, on the bus with all the you know Oliveira fought on that card and Oliveira and his coach and his manager said you won that fight. You know, so a lot of high people who know what fighting is, they did say I won that fight. Um, me watching it back, I thought very close fight. You know, because I put the I was the one who put the pressure on. I caught him with the bigger shots. He put a lot of more volume on, and you know, I I instigated the the scrambles, the takedowns, and stuff like that. So, um, but I still couldn't even call it myself to be honest, because it was close. Mm. Yeah. Every round was pretty close. So. That's the thing, in it, with, with MMA, it's, it's opinions, isn't it, when, it comes to, yeah. when it's that close? You know what I mean? And it's it just a Texas shitty opinion. as well. You know, a lot of people say if it was in UK, you'd win, but you, c- you can't really think you, but like I say, it was, it was a close fight. Yeah, yeah. and that was, um, I guess, at that point, then the first time in your whole career that you'd been um, on a two-fight skid. It is first ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did that just exacerbate the, the kind of feelings that you just talked about in regards to your fears about being cut and that type yeah, of thing? Yeah, then I was like... Well, I must be getting cut here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm at that stage, and I'm messaging my coach. Says, "Call, do you think they're going to cut me?" He says, "There's no chance they're going to cut you." Mm. He says, "Too close." He it? says, "They can't cut you." He says, "You've you've just fought, um, you know, you fought over with three rounds with a broken jaw, uh, for you know, on a small salary. Then you've gone three rounds split decision for a guy who didn't want to come near you um, because he's worried about your wrestling. Just played the points game." He says you took the fight to him and blah blah blah. So he says you're not gonna get you're not gonna get caught. And he was right. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are never gonna experience that sort of being in a being in an octagon full stop, but certainly sort of, you know, in the UFC in the big crowd. What what does it feel like when you're in there? Yeah, it's how can you explain that to people? It's it's a, you know, it's it's a mad buzz that you you can't really replicate. I mean you've got you know, like London for it. I'll use London and even Texas. Texas was, Texas was a good crowd for me, even as even though I was against the American guy. But I will use London as an example. For example, London's like you've got twenty odd, twenty thousand people. You know, mainly for you because obviously it was in London, um, and you just you just feel that energy off all all the all the fans. You know, screaming screaming for you kind of thing, and you know your family and your friends are out there, and it's just um, yeah, it's a surreal surreal moment. You know, even the weigh-ins. The weigh-ins are, are <laughs> yeah. you know I enjoy the weigh-ins to be honest yeah I'm, but yeah. putting weighing in but yeah the, the, how, uh, how, did you have to do any major weight cuts and stuff like that or was you alright with that yeah no I, I cut all that I fight a feather I'm sometimes walking around at 80 kilogram so how how, how, so how did you find all those like yeah uh, I mean I do it well because coming from that wrestling background again, again is you know we've always cut weight we've always monitored our weight and um, it's, I think it's a lot of it's mentality. You just got to be mentally, mentally tough, mentally strong to be able to do it. It's um, it's a very tough process to follow. You know what I mean? You 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 want to drink, you can't drink. Mm-hmm. You want to eat, you can't eat. You got to still train. You got to you got to still get the weight off. So, it's um, it's still a tough process for me. But like the way I do it, to be honest, is I um, diet myself down to like I'm probably like six percent body fat um, up until fight week. And then even fight week, I've still got, I mean, we do our UFC check-ins on Tuesday and I'm still 73 kilogram then. So I've still got seven, seven kilogram to go on the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So then um, obviously you've got no carbs then. You know, you're just eating fats and protein, very small, very small portions. And then uh, you cut your water out 24 hours before. And on the Thursday, the Thursday, uh, which is Friday morning weighing, I've got Thursday, I've still got five kilogram left to cut on a, in, in the in the in the two sessions I'll do. So I'll do like a kilogram in the morning, I'll do like probably by the time I've drifted be like three three kilogram at night time. Um last time I did it I had three three kilogram yeah to do in one session. And I don't do baths or sauna. That's what I was about to say. Do you do do you do that sort of stuff or no, do you I just don't, I don't exercise really like or? them. Uh, but a lot of people a lot of people say they all of people do baths and say you know you should be doing baths. Like these experts now that's that's doing stuff that they, they, they'd rather me do the baths but um i always train it off so i'll do an hour hour and 15 minutes training and i'm on weight yeah that's is that just front the sweatsuit or just doing that sweatsuit no yeah. sweatsuit yeah it's still it's hard like don't yeah. get me wrong to train because <laughs> yeah. you've got nothing inside of you mm. but i mean you've no energy 
Um, but yeah, that's, you, I, I train it off. That mm. mentality is crazy, though, isn't it? When you really think about mm. how you feel, even even just training in a deficit is fucking horrible. Yeah. Let alone to be where where you are. Like, obviously, because I've never experienced it, but I can't imagine how you'd feel at that point where you were that little body fat, eating that little calories, coming into probably biggest fight of your life. And then still having to fucking mm. cut that extra weight, you know. Yeah, it's but hats off to you, mate, because yeah. it's it's a tough process. Did you find that with the obviously the focus on cutting weight? Does that sometimes take your mind off of the the magnitude of like what you're working towards? It does, yeah. That and the media really as well. To yeah, honest. yeah, it does. The, the weight cut, you you only concentrate on the weight cut mm. until after the weight cut. When you finish your weight cut, then you, you then you'll start thinking about the fight a little bit more. Mm. So it does take away, you know, like you say what you could possibly think it about if you wasn't cutting weight like oh, there's 20,000 people or there's you know there's hundreds and thousands of people watching on TV or you know, whatever yeah. so <laughs> yes I can help <laughs> when, when does that kick in for you then is it literally once you've made weight and then you start thinking about it or then you're on to like, the next part of the process yeah you're just on to the, the fight but I've kind of come to terms with when I when I knew I always knew I was going to get to the UFC um, in my mind there was never no there was never no doubt you know what I mean but I always, I just, I always come to terms with the fact that you know what, there's, there's a handful of people that's going to do fighting anyway, and then there's a very small percentage of people that's going to get to the FC. So, who cares who's watching? Whether I win or whenever I lose, I mean, oh, it's huge not, achievement, not, isn't it? Fucking there's not hell. People who's ever even stepped foot in the cage, never mind, thinking so they can't comment. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, mate, hundred percent. Whatever happens, so I don't really care what, what they think or what they say. Yeah, what are your training camps normally like? How long are they, and and what sort of training and intensity do you normally sort of go through? Yeah, I'm always training, but um, <laughs> you're probably looking at ten weeks out. You know, you start in like your extra pads. Uh, so like my my typical training week, you know, you got I'd have Monday, Wednesday, Friday pads in the morning about nine thirty, and then at ten thirty I'd wrestle and um, jiu jitsu for two hours. And then Tuesday, Thursday mornings sparring. Mm -hmm. So that's all my mornings. And then evening, I'd have like two two hours every evening as well, all evening. So mixed between Thai um, or your grappling. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday morning was uh, usually either grappling and pads mm -hmm. or we'd, um, I'd do like some strength conditioning. Yeah. I'm out, sorry, my weights are there two times a week as well. So you've got, You've got a good five hour day. Mm. Yeah, it's a full time job, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, what's your yeah. What's your recovery like? Recovery when what? I'm when I'm in camp mainly and being hundred percent professional. Then it's like I'd sauna, mm -hmm. sauna once a week, yeah. um, and I'd try to go to the oxygen chamber once a week as well and have a massage once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm getting older, I'll probably get a few more recovery. <laughs> 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 so we just had a sauna, sauna steam and plunge be, built in our gym. Yeah. So that's going to come in handy for me for my next fight. Um, so yeah I'll be doing that probably two to three times a week yeah. fucking every day mate yeah, so I'll, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be in it like I'll probably need it yeah. yeah and you mentioned earlier when you first got to um, Team Cowboy your, your kind of introduction was like the wall of death yeah um, I'm familiar with things like shark tanking as well but during your fight camps is, do you do, do the guys there use that type of method to, to kind of get you conditioned for those those kind of longer bouts and those, yeah, yeah they will do yeah um like I've done rounds, I've done rounds on, I've done 10. Like for example, for my um, uh, fight, probably my first biggest fight was in Shuto in Japan. Mm -hmm. I was fighting a two weight world champion. He was featherweight and lightweight champion in Shuto. Mm -hmm. So I went there to fight him. And um, I had a I had an horrible camp for that. <laughs> it was, <laughs> was there's only me fighting at that time. Till was in Brazil. Tom was I think going, more into boxing at the time and um, we had a few pros coming through but there was only me really fighting but yeah we so it was all a lot of it was quite concentrated on me so um, Colin after every single class I'd have this circuit that I'd have to do which is a pretty br brutal circuit you know after after the class but then if, after every um, after every sparring however many people was in the in the gym so there was 10 or 15 whatever there was I'd have to do two minutes after two minutes sparring with everyone <laughs> after fuck you know any rest or just back to back no, but, uh, I'd, well he's, he called it a rest it was a minute's rest 
but in that minute's rest, I had complete some exercises. <laughs> so it was like, I'd probably get 20 seconds of the rest because it'd take me 40 seconds to complete the exercises within the minute. So I'd get 20 seconds, then I'd be back on. So I'd have an extra sparring, mm. fresh man out, two minutes, probably about 10 to 15 people. Mm. So that, but I was the fittest probably ever that, for that, for yeah, that fight. Yeah, mental, it? Those yeah. sort of exercises. I so yeah, we do get we do get a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And it depends specific to the to what who they're fighting or whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for those that I guess don't know what a shark tank is, I mean, I've I've done some sort of versions of it, but what does that look like for for you guys there when you do a shark tank? Is it is it like I don't know? I think I was fighting three threes at one point at amateur, so I think I did like six sixes, and every two minutes. It was like a fresh lad in, no, like no rest straight on your back from any position as well. So you just secure like a top position, yeah, and then someone's dragging you off and, and getting you <laughs> yeah, in. It's just it's just relentless, isn't it? I mean, it's and and the the worst thing is the lads love it because they know you're tired, so they take advantage. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, right. they're trying to think, and you're just thinking, you man, oh, God, I'm gonna kill you when I'm fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, like a recent one, probably Kale and Lochran. Uh, he just got the Cage Warriors title at bantamweight. Um, he's a great fighter by the way he's um, up and coming and he's going to be he's going to be 100% UFC very soon you know one day definitely um, like he is his class of his shark tank was um, he'd be grappling on the fence with somebody but then he'd be doing then he'd be in between doing pads mm -hmm. a certain combination back on the fence back on the pads back on the fence back on the fence so that'd be like a I don't know 20-30 minute thing for him it'd be ridiculous so Stuff like that. Working on the fence is fucking horrible as well, isn't it? Yeah. People don't know out there. Like, Especially with fucking like him on you as yeah, well. <laughs> 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 Being pinned to a fence against someone decent is yeah, fucking it's horrible. It's tough. Yeah, no, so that's, it's interesting because I know everybody does it a little bit different, but like we talked about, obviously, Cal Bon, I've, I've got such a good pedigree. It's good to hear uh, what they're up to up there. Um, so where did we get to your career? We pretty much got back to where we, we came in at, didn't we? Yeah. So obviously you're... Obviously, a couple of fights down at this point, very close sort of decision losses. And then obviously fight uh, Amir Khani. Um, and you obviously sort of touched on the news about your dad. Um, really sorry to hear about him, by the way. Um, but also there was obviously that pressure, I guess, of knowing the situation you're in with the UFC and all of that kind of, I guess, maybe sort of contributed, as you said. Um, obviously, once you woke up from that choke, like what, went, what was the first thing that went through your head at that point? <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> enough, um, when you when you get I don't know you've been, have you ever been put to sleep by mm. a shock? Yeah, you have. So when I when I when I woke up, I had I because I dreamed in when I've been I dreamed that um, I'd won. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I opened my eyes and thinking I've I've won here, but um, obviously I'm not. You can just either either the fans scream it's slowly coming in. And then you open your eyes, and um, you know you you spend it takes about twenty seconds to come round or something and to understand that shit. I mean, in front of twenty thousand people, I've just been choked out. Um, but yeah, I had a dream that I won. I, I had a dream that I knocked him out. It's a good job I didn't get up on this. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So I would have looked like a right dickhead. But yeah, um, that's that's what I dreamt. But yeah, it was um, you know worst time you could worst time of your life at that time. You know what I mean? You can't you can't. It's the worst thing that can happen. No. Obviously, being knocked out is bad, but also being put to sleep is bad. But I, I would never. I've, I mean, I've two fights now that I've lost by a choke, and I've not. I wouldn't. I've not tapped. Just I don't know what the mentality is. Um, it was Brett Okamoto actually rang me not long ago and said, you know, he was on about doing a bit of an article on, on, um, you know, fighters. Why do they not yeah. tap? Mm. And he 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 asked me one. He, I was one of them to be asked, and he and he asked. I didn't really know the answer. I said, I mean, I just don't think I tap him. I feel okay. I feel like I'm, you know, going to get out. I mean, part of it, that one was, that specific fight was probably because obviously my dad was there in the crowd and um, I wouldn't tap in front of, I wouldn't tap in front of my dad really. And the circumstances as well, you know, we knew he was terminally ill and stuff like that. I just wouldn't do that. I know it's not nice seeing me be put to sleep, but you always think you've got that last breath to get out. Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah, it was um, a bad time for me, that. Yeah. With the tapping thing, do you do you have the same, not that you've ever been caught in this position, but maybe over the years you might have been and, and got out, but I kind of get it with choking 
because you're just not off and it feels quite nice when you wake up and you have a little dream and it's, it's fine. Yeah, I agree, yeah. yeah but Everyone says that. I'm, I'm uh, yeah. Uh, just let me know a couple of want, times mate. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, But obviously with joint locks and that type of thing, um, do you have the same sort of mentality around joint locks? So if someone's, you know, sort of Kimura, you know, tearing your shoulder out. I'll, f- I'll definitely fight to the last, to, till, the, till the end, like, do you know what I mean? But would I let them snap my shoulder? No. Mm. Uh, or snap my arm, do you know what I mean? No, I wouldn't. But you just don't know because in that that moment it's different, you know. What I mean, like in training, like if someone chokes me, I'll tap. Mm. But just fight, like I never even never even cross my mind to tap. Yeah. Uh, in both fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no fair one. So I think that was March, wasn't it? That fight. Yeah. And then I think May was the announcement that you'd been released from UFC. Around. Like, did you did you kind of know that was coming yeah. at that point? Like, how did you feel when that when that was announced? At that point, yeah, I kind of kind of knew then. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> Obviously, free fight losing streak. Um, you know, a couple of close fights, but you know, the last one obviously was inevitable. It's, it's gonna it's gonna get gonna get caught. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll see you back at some point, mate. Yeah. Um, sounds like you've got a good opportunity with PFL as well. So. Hopefully, yeah. That hopefully you know I mean we can get something started with you know with Dan Hardy and we can hang it. Yeah. We can get on a show this year or early next year or whatever. Yeah. But. That'd be class, I've, mate. Just uh, do it. It'd be class, yeah. I've like, I've, I'd like to. I know I've just noticed that PFL's teching on like amateurs as well. So, okay. what I'd like is to is to get me and my son on the same card, which would yeah, be nice. Yeah, that'd be cool, cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, because obviously we've, I mean, we've we've wrestled each other, and then we've always said we'd like. Well, he probably wouldn't like be on the same card as me. I don't know, but <laughs> you'd like I it. I might be cramping his style, but um, <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to be on the same card as my son because it doesn't doesn't happen much, does it? Oh, it's, I don't think it's ever happened. I've never heard of it anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Not, not on a bigger, not on a big scene. No, definitely not. So is that so? When you say they're taking on amateurs, they're actually they're actually. The, the, the shows are actually going to feature amateur and professional bouts. I just yeah, I just seen uh, Dan. Okay. He put it on Instagram the other day. He said about um, he possibly maybe put a couple of amateurs. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Like one or two amateurs on 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 some cards maybe because I think it, I think PFLs maybe obviously it's, it comes over here and it, they've got a lot of stars now. You know what I mean? So. Class, Brandon's yeah. made it big I think it's a good idea yeah. I think it it's is. a really good idea because there's blood in the young talent or the amateurs coming through to experience that yeah. kind of bigger big, big show, bigger yeah. thing before they're thrown in with the Lions effectively yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean PFL's getting pretty big in it you know yeah. I mean you've got Brendan's got it big over here PFL you know he's won the tournament Dakota the girl the Thai boxing she does she does, she did Thai boxing but she's, she's class as a fighter to be honest Dakota, Dakota looks really good mm. So they've got some stars, aren't they? You know what I mean? So mm, Yeah, I think it'd be good. But they, they do it on some of the regional shows, don't they? I mean, Shock and Awe is a prime example where they'll have, it's a, it's a fairly decent show for a, a sort of a, a regional show. But they've got amateurs and pros yeah. and sometimes some of the best fights are amateur fights. Yeah. Because they're, you know, they, they're slightly more protected in regard to obviously the size of the gloves and some of the shots that you're not allowed to throw. And they're fucking keen as mustard as well, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? Real laughs> ones. yeah. And it's just scary now, though, isn't it? I, I, these young kids that's coming through, how good they are. Yeah. Oh, mate, we say it all the time. Don't yeah, they? Like, these, they're, they're a different breed, aren't they? It's yeah. Right. Different yeah. breed. You get them with, like, a 20-year-old who's fucking decent. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. You know? But it's like you said, I think, you know, sort of wrestling from a young age, you know, when we were sort of growing up, was really rare. Yeah. Um, a lot of lads boxed. So a lot of lads are decent boxers, but we know grappling is like a different thing entirely, isn't it? Like we it talked is. about. Um, it takes a long time to learn, doesn't it? Yeah, but also condition your body to it, like you said. Yeah. Whereas these days, you know, you'll you meet some of the lads today, but yeah, some of the young lads coming through now, they're like sort of 19, 20. They've been training as long as yeah. most adults, but they've just got these amazing bodies for it now and they just move so well. And it's, <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. We, I had a wrestling match with my son not uh, not long ago. Because um, I told you, I think, already, but the, the bet. But... Um, you can just feel he's eighteen and he's he's so he's already so strong, you know what mm. I mean? And he's um explosive and stuff, so it's like and then he's he's been training from four to to eighteen. So he's done more wrestling than, than most most men have. Yeah, you know I mean? oh, yeah, hundred percent. He's yeah. starting MMA, so he's like he's ahead of the game kind of thing, and that's a lot of kids are like that now in, in America and in this country. Mm. Yeah, Scary. watch out. Yeah. Um, mate, can I ask you about Tom Aspinall real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um obviously you mentioned that he he's not he's training with you guys anymore. No, he's not really there at a minute. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if you spoke to him recently, but 
obviously he's coming off the ACL injury in his last match which was yeah pretty fucking savage but he's got a fight in I think three weeks yeah London he headlines London doesn't he yeah yeah have you have you kind of seen him training at all in the you know since the injury do you know how he's how he's looking see him do some pads and stuff like that he seems all right yeah he's um he seems he's done some pads with one of our coaches that don't as John Gillies so he did some pads there but he um yeah I think he Tom knowing Tom I think he'll um Make sure it's hundred percent before he does obviously fight. Yeah, can only imagine it's going to be right. Yeah. Yeah. You got any predictions for the fight? Uh, I think Tom's Tom's going to win that fight. Mm. Did I mean? I think it's quite it should be quite a comfortable fight for Tom. That mm. um, what is he? He's like Miss. What's he? Tybur is it? Is he yeah. Polish guy? Yeah. 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 He's a bit older, I think, as well, isn't he? Tom's probably a little bit too fast for him and yeah. too intelligent for him. He's um, he's top ten that guy. I think he's only he's tenth that guy. I'm surprised Tom fought, fought, fought against that guy who's, who's, who's 10 low, you know, maybe, but then again, I suppose it's a good warm fight for him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Getting back into it, maybe, you know, after, after that yeah. injury, it's horrible, isn't it? But yeah, the heavyweight division's scary, isn't it? You know what I mean? Them yeah. little four eight clubs, it's <laughs> yeah, matter, mate. touch you, you, you're getting knocked out, and you, so you've got to yeah. watch it, but yeah. yeah, I think Tom in that one. Yeah, yeah, no, I hope so, man. And do you think he's obviously touted to be one of the biggest, certainly the probably the biggest UK heavyweight prospect I can remember. Do you think, you know, if he got in there against the likes of John Jones, you know, do you think he's potentially got the talent to, yeah. to get it done? I think he can, he can, he's got the talent to do it, get it done, but yeah. John Jones is a savage, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's he's hell, unreal. Fucking he's an horrible, he's, he's never an horrible lost, talent as well. Oh, as well. Mate. Yeah. He's generally never lost. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, what he done against Cyril Gain was crazy, wasn't it? Like, yeah. Cyril's Cyril a beast, Gaines. isn't he? Like a fucking monster and he just made him look like a kid. I you know look at I mean? Cyril Gain and look at Tom and um, I think they're similar fighters yeah. but Tom's just a bit faster. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Tom's a bit faster than every week. And I think Tom's probably got the better jiu-jitsu as well, I'd imagine. Yeah. And the better wrestling. Yeah, I'd imagine, yeah, he's got better jiu-jitsu. Not I've not seen loads of Cyril Gain's jiu-jitsu but I'd imagine Tom's is better, yeah. Yeah, well, I think primarily he's, um, yeah, I think he's got that, that striking background, hasn't he? I think he's only been doing MMA for a few years yeah, so, he says, he's, so he's yeah. going to be limited, you know, yeah, guys like Yeah, Yeah. Happy days, man. No, I appreciate it. Um, anything you want to kind of shout out? Do you want to tell us about the um, the fitness academy that you've got up in Wigan tour? Um, or anything you want to talk through? Yeah, so, I mean, we've got a great structure set up. You know, we've got a gym with all the up-to-date equipment. You know, we've got um, all the strength hammer stuff, which is, I think, really good gear. You know, we've just got all our um, sauna, steam, and our cold plunge just put in there yesterday. So I can't, I can't wait to get back and use that. Um, so it's I've got a business partner Danny Casey who's actually always sponsored me mm. from 17 to be honest he's always looked after me you know he's he's, no um, he's got a successful company and he's um, he's always sponsored me so he's my business partner within the gym as well so he's um, he's took over taking care of like the sauna and the steam and stuff like that so you know it's going to be like bang on because it's just perfectionist <laughs> it, it looks it looks fucking good yeah. mate it looks yeah, so nice see the video yeah it's yeah. class so um that's why it looks so good as well. Um, but yeah, so we've got that. And then you know, we've also got all our wrestling. We've got a wrestling team, jiu-jitsu, uh, MMA. We've got a box. We're an amateur boxing club as well. Um, and we have the Thai boxing and stuff in there. So we're, we're you know, we're pretty full on with, with our structure. Mainly, I'd say mainly for kids, kids, or the kids coming through because we started off as a wrestling club and we have, we already had 50 kids in the gym wrestling. Yes, so sure. yeah, we've got, now, we've been going 20, 20 odd years as a wrestling club so we've we've always had you know a good wrestling team so yeah we, we've got a good good structure for adults as well you know we've got sessions every night for the adults and then for the kids like I said we've got some really good kids coming free but yeah we've, we've that's 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 our academy it's um those, those it's kids must be setup. little beasts mate like so, <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean as in like just their fitness and and just everything like that it's not enough of it around is there like no. that grappling from a young age it must be like little animals but yeah they could they, some kids are doing something every night you know what I mean they? they'll wrestle twice a week then they'll do boxing twice a week and then they'll do jiu-jitsu twice a week mm. it's like <laughs> training is more than me at a minute <laughs> <laughs> happy days you got any other questions mate no I'm, I'm all good mate I think everything was yeah, yeah fucking loads in there yeah. loved it loved right. it let's go wrestle mate Mate, yeah. hope to see you soon. Appreciate it. Right. Thanks very much. Thank mate. you, mate. Cheers, nice mate. Nice to meet Thank you both you. as well. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.